1968, Iowa school teacher Jane Elliott gave her third grade students a first hand experience in the meaning of discrimination the day after Martin Luther King Jr. was murdered. This film of what she taught the children and the impact that lesson had on their lives has been hugely influential, although it is out of step with what teachers might be able to do with their classes now. Make sure you watch at least the first two parts of the film and keep a record of your thoughts. Let's think about some of the points that came out from watching that video. Groupthink in particular, peer pressure and power. What happened and how does this relate to the work you do in your communities? So we've looked at power and how it's described from people from a philosophical point of view, social theorist point of view. There are many other groups that are considering power from their perspective. One that we're interested in is how conflict workers, conflict writers, thinkers and academics have talked about power over the years. Traditionally, they talk about hard and soft power. So this idea of an enforced power, militaristic power versus a persuasive, coercive power of diplomacy and negotiation. In addition, they think about power as being under the surface and out of sight in many of the ways that we talked about before, but as being rooted in authority or position, in who has access to resources, and resources can include information as much as anything else, about who has the most skills and expertise, and that allows them to operate in the world more skillfully. And they also recognise personal power and qualities that allow individuals to rise up networks and be more influential. On the slide in front of you, you can see an example of a power pyramid from John Paul Lederach. We talked about him before in earlier sessions here. And he's been a very influential writer and thinker around conflict models and also how it plays out on the ground. Ledrack was also a very influential person to push the idea of conflict transformation as opposed to conflict resolution. We talked at the end of session three about how conflict transformation is a process, an ongoing process of social change, as opposed to a single one-off solution of a problem. Ledrack looked at diplomacy as it worked on an international level and thought about what is in the diplomatic world called track one and track two diplomacy. So that's track one is diplomacy between heads of state and leaders and track two between influential people at high levels in society, so generals or university leaders, religious leaders, etc. But he added on a third track, a grassroots level, and he said that without fully involving people at the grassroots level, you are never going to have a sustainable situation. Just because people in a room somewhere decide that it should be so, doesn't mean that the people who are most affected, the people on the ground, will make it happen. It's going to be over to you now to think about how power is operating at a local level in your environment. You can download a handout in the additional materials folder that both gives you an example of Lederach's power pyramid and also gives you this template to fill in for yourselves. What we want you to do is to take 20 minutes to think about who's out there in your communities and how well they're connected to others. It may be people at the top of the tree, so level one managers, council leaders, etc. Or it could be people who are mid-range connectors, maybe decision makers, corporate leaders, religious leaders, education leaders. Or it could just as well be, and just as importantly be, people who are working at the grassroots in communities who've got important spheres of influence and networks. What we're trying to do with this exercise is get you to think not just who's out there, but also how much they are in touch with each, other, with each other and where you can spot new potential networks. In summary then, we've looked at power as a fixed structure, for example the class structure, and that it doesn't always have to be enforced. It can be applied through self-censorship. Think of Bentham's Panopticon and so on.
We've also seen how modern thinking around power focuses on our power relationships and multiple identities. So that each verse experiences a different sense of power in different circumstances and we've looked at how easily these relationships can be manipulated. In the world of conflict transformation then, this idea is very important because the focus is on balancing these power relationships. Uh, and that's in order to move towards a sense of collaboration. So that's what we're really looking for when we talk about power. Things to do now. Don't forget to evaluate the session and uh, you can also complete and upload your assignments. If you are interested in further reading or additional information, do check out the additional materials folder as well. I hope you've enjoyed the session, so thanks very much and goodbye till next time.